Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis and welcome back to Coffee, Computers and More. And I just wanted to talk to you guys for a little bit about my 2024 Honda Passport Trail Sport. It just turned over a thousand miles. I'll show you the odometer here in a little bit. Um, I've had it for six weeks and I just wanna let you know about the ownership experience, how's it been, the pros and the cons, do I regret buying it? You know, how much should I pay for it? You know, what are my thoughts on it and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. So I got this Passport approximately December 27th of 2023. It is a uh, 2024 model. It is a Trail Sport model. It does have the new center console in the center. And uh, just right off the top, I mean, I, I absolutely love the vehicle, okay? Um, you know, I've owned SUVs before, full-size SUVs. There's a lot of things I really like about it. There's a couple things that I kind of wish it had that it didn't come with. And uh, there's maybe some areas that might bug you a little bit about it, but overall, it's been really good. So why don't we go and talk about price? Um, I did pay 45800 something dollars for it. There's a lot of people that argue and say that this vehicle is overpriced, and I mean, if you go price yourself like a Jeep Grand Cherokee with four-wheel drive and a leather interior or an Explorer with a six-cylinder in it, not a four-cylinder, uh, you know, you're going to be pushing forty five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, and that's just kind of the reality of a full-size SUV. I guess you could call a full-size SUV. Um, you know, I could have gone maybe Hyundai and got a little bit more for the money, maybe a few more features or maybe getting like a Palisade, um, but I was kind of thinking longevity. I wanted something that's going to last hundreds of thousands of miles. Hopefully, I'm going to get that, all right? Um, what do I like about the vehicle? Well, first of all, it's very comfortable to ride in. It's very quiet. The Trail Sport suspension is a little bit, uh, a little bit softer than the Black Edition with the 20 inch wheels on it that I drove like before I bought this one. And that's totally fine. This has a little more articulation when you're out in the elements and gives you a little more flexibility when you're going over rough terrain. Now, uh, a couple things about this. This really is not an out-of-the-box rock crawler. There's some things you have to do to it. It does have some limitations. You know, if you buy it knowing what its limits are, I think you'll be happier with it. But this isn't something that I think you're going to take to Moab right away without some modifications, all right? Uh, the other thing that I really like about the vehicle is the engine transmission combo. The V6 in this thing is awesome. It sounds great. It's got plenty of power. The other day, I took a couple friends and all their luggage to the airport. Had no trouble at all keeping up. Plenty of power. Didn't even notice they were even in the car. Uh, 3,500 pounds of towing right out of the box. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty stout drivetrain. Um, some people complain about the ZF nine-speed transmission. I don't notice any rough shifts. I don't notice anything weird about it. The way that it's designed is a little bit different from a lot of other like multi-speed transmissions. It's not a CVT. It kind of has a different set of ways that it shifts. I'm not going to get into the, the technicalities, but take it out and drive it. See what you think about it. I took mine in some stop and go slow traffic. I took it on the highway, took it out on the interstate, the black edition that I test drove, which has the same engine and transmission. And I was really happy with it. It was really cool. Um, and again, plenty of room inside. That's another thing I really enjoy about it. It's spacious. It's frigging wide. I think it's built on the Odyssey platform. So, I mean, it's, it's, this thing's got a lot of room in it. I've got a foot between me and my passenger. And, uh, for backseat passengers, you have a ton of leg room. You can also slide the back seats forward and back and tilt them back, which is really cool too. So I think if you're, even if you're over six feet, you're still going to have plenty of room in the back seat. I'm five foot 10, five feet 11. I've got four or five inches in front of my knees before I hit the seat backs from how I have this uh, set up in the front. So space is great. It's cavernous in the back for luggage. You can put multiple giant Pullman cases in the back. Without getting to volume, it's pretty much on par with an Explorer and a Grand Cherokee. So I kind of think that's maybe what you could cross shop this with. A few more things I like about it. The interior is very comfortable. I really like these leather seats. They're heated. They're not ventilated on the Trail Sport. I can live with that. The climate control HVAC is great. I've, I've only used the AC a couple times. It's fine. It has no trouble defrosting or keeping the cabin warm. It's a very sealed vehicle um, and it does keep out a lot of the noise. And so I think that's a really good thing about it too. It's, it, it feels a lot more refined. Of course, this might be the last year of production for this particular generation before they switch over to a new one. More pros about it, it's also very capable off-road. When I drove through snow, thick snow, deep snow, ice, had no trouble moving around. I've got those General Grabber AT Sport tires on it, which came from the factory. So we'll take a look at those. I'll talk about them a little bit, you know, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and so on. Gas mileage, we'll start to maybe dip into some of the cons now. Um, gas mileage has only been uh, 16.9, 17, but it's all... Warming up, me going to work about a mile and a half and, and me uh, driving back a mile and a half and that's it. So it's all zero to 45 miles an hour, zero to 35 and that's it. So you're not in those upper gears, which is where the ZF transmission really shines in terms of your fuel economy. I know it's rated at 18 and 24. Now granted, we're still just breaking the engine in because it's only got a thousand miles on us. I'm hoping that that'll loosen up a little bit and the mileage will increase. If not, 
I knew it going into it that this was the mileage I was going to get, so I really don't care. I've driven large SUVs before. I expect it. You really kind of notice the decrease in the mileage if you're going into the wind, too. Not a lack of power, but efficiency is definitely going to go down. It does have triple zone climate control, so you do have what I call the marriage saver. <laughs> Dual climate control up in the front. And then rear controls are done from the front panel, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. Um, so you can give you know good heat or ventilation cooling to the backseat passengers, which is a good thing. Uh, a couple more kind of concern areas that I had, and uh, let me just show this to you real quick. So, build quality. Okay, so I posted a question on, I, I'm in a couple Honda forums that I belong to on Facebook. Great people, wonderful people to chat with, but I complained about the gap in my hatch because the rear, hap gap, the rear hatch gap is like, it's like 0.18 on the left-hand side and like, point like three five or point four zero on the right so there's like a quarter inch difference in the gap between the right side and the left side of my hatch i posted this concern on facebook and got tons and tons of laughing out loud emojis and a lot of people were saying oh well, what are you expecting a bmw or a mercedes i'm like well no but i mean like a hatch in 2024 you know we can visit other planets but we can't get a hatch that like is a line on a vehicle it, it kind of blew my mind my Hyundai, my 2020 Hyundai Kona SEL, which was half the price of this vehicle, had zero fit and finish issues. Everything was great. The way it was put together, no problems at all. Instead, I've got things that kind of look like this, which, uh, in my opinion, uh, kind of rival <laughs> like a 1980s Snap Night model kit. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but there's a pretty good gap right there, right, up here in the corner. And then over here on the left-hand side, things are nice and tight, okay? Not sure if you can see it, but that's what we have. Also, a few concerns. Let me just show you the rear hatch. Now, I can get the rear hatch fixed, and I probably will. I just haven't done it yet because it's not leaking any air or water or anything like that. See how we got a nice big gap there? And then on the left-hand side, it's much, much closer, okay? And I measured it. It's like 0.18 over here. I want to say like 0.35 or something like that, 0 0.40. Um, also, just little things like some of the trim and the rubber like this is just sticking out right here it's not tucked up underneath the trim and the plastic um, other things like this rubber over here kind of hangs off almost a quarter inch and it's flush on the other side now again you can say well that's Honda live with it okay I get it that's fine but then there's things like you know drips in the paint right here there's four or five of those on it so it's not a piece of crap I'm just saying that there's little things that I'm surprised with that I'm having to deal with in a 2024 vehicle that I never dealt with before even in the Hyundai um, general grabber AT sport tires are awesome they have great traction they um, they're, they're 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 wonderful they, they don't hum they produce more of like a white noise kind of noise I guess honestly I really don't have any complaints don't expect you know sports car handling off those wheels and tires and yeah I know she's dirty we've been going through water melting snow all week but um, the tires are really good in fact I'd probably replace the tires with another set of these when I'm done and that's just what they look like after a thousand miles of wear um, the headlights are great you do have your LEDs for lows and you've got incandescents for highs they work fine they work great at nighttime plenty of visibility no issues at all. Now, again, anything I say here, you know, you really could disagree with me, and that's that's fine. Down below, a couple things I like. You do have that power hatch. The button's right there. One of the little quirks about it, though, the heated windshield, it's really nice to have, but it comes on automatically when the temperature dips below, like, 40 degrees, and that drives a lot of people nuts because the manual says that that's actually not really hard on the battery, but it says it uses a lot of power, so turn it off if you don't want to use it. I'm like, well, why even have it come on automatically if it creates some sort of a power draw issue? So, anyway, that heated windshield is really cool. Um, power folding mirrors, I love that. That's, like, one of the greatest features I never thought I needed, but it's so nice, especially if you're in, you know, any kind of parking lot. Just hit that, folds the mirrors in. That way, hopefully, somebody won't clip them and cost you, you know, $1,500 because we know they're not going to stick around and tell you that they did it. Okay, it's fired up real quick. Um, the display, there's a funny term that somebody used on this display the other day. Uh, they call it a jitterbug display like an old fogey jitterbug phone you know where there's minimalist features on there analog on the left and the right very simple display in the middle and not a whole lot that it offers right here now do understand that all of your advanced settings and everything can be found right here in the main menu so you know if you can't do it up here you can do it over here and that's totally fine i'm fine with this display and that kind of takes us to another controversial area which i'll talk about here in a little bit you know, fit and finish in the cabin overall has been fine, except for that little bit of trim up there, which I might see if I can press it in or maybe have the dealer address. I like the switch buttons for the um, HVAC. Easy to use, comfortable. I like buttons. Buttons work. Buttons do the job, you know. And I think this missing button right here, this might be something with the right rear. Can't remember what it was exactly, but I don't have it. You know, we do have the heated seats. 
Again, center console right here. And uh, just overall, very, very comfortable. So I'm, I'm five foot 11, I weigh around 215, 220 pounds. And uh, I find the interior very comfortable. I love the steering wheel, easy to access the controls you want. And then the, uh, what is it, the Smart Cruise? No, the Lane Keep Assist slash Smart Cruise. I think they're great. I was using both of them on Interstate 80 coming back uh, from my grandparents yesterday. And the Lane Keep Assist works really good. As long as I keep my hands kind of positioned down here and just add a little weight to the steering wheel, there's the little notice doesn't flash me every 30 seconds um, asking me to put my hands on the steering wheel. So there's little things you can do to really uh, kind of maximize its abilities. And uh, again, there's the uh, odometer for you right there. at thousand miles okay we're right at it so again overall i've been happy with it audio system is pretty good my kona spoiled me because i had like a 350 watt or 375 watt infinity sound system uh, this one's i think is 215 watts and it's fine for what it is am fm xm hd radio you know the sound is pretty good all right now let's talk about a couple things here that might be some talking points with people about this vehicle so as you may or may not know, there's a, another generation, next generation Honda Passport that Honda's working on. And it looks pretty cool. It looks even more like the Pilot. A lot of people thought the 2024 Passport was going to get the interior that the Pilot has, which is similar but not. It has different HVAC controls. It has a new updated infotainment system, larger, one inch larger screen. I'm fine with the eight inch screen. The new one comes with a nine inch, if I'm not mistaken. Different display inside, all digital display inside. You also kind of get a half analog, half digital display on the ridge lines, which also have the new infotainment system. Well, this vehicle, the 2024, didn't get any of those things. Nor did you get the skid plate that comes on the pilot that supposedly will be on the new 2025 passports or the advanced trail modes. Okay, so what do we get? Well, we do get some protection underneath. We do have snow, sand, and mud modes, which works fine for me. Putting it in snow mode got me through everything I wanted. I've got a no low design skid plate that I haven't put on the front yet that I bought used for 80 bucks. So you can get a skid plate if you want to. And then it also has, while well, the Pilot has a beefed up rear differential, so the chances of overheating the all wheel drive system, depending on the surface is that you're driving on, is going to be more minimalized than it would be with this vehicle. So these vehicles can overheat a little bit. Um, I was watching the TFL video where they're running it and, you know, you can only spin the wheels on this thing until you overheat the differential because of the way the clutch packs are designed. So you can't get past the physics of the design. But a lot of people said, well, if they're going to put Trail Sport in the name of it, that it should be trail capable. And this thing will get you to most places you want to go. But there could be some terrain, terrain that is going to realistically challenge it. So just keep that in mind. I was watching a video on uh, Driving Sports TV with the Honda Pilot. And uh, the host, Ryan, he was just taking it right up the mountain, no problems. This actually performed really well in the snow, too. And that was also one of the videos that kind of sold me on it. Now, there's also a video where you see Ryan on Driving Sports TV overheating the differentials on this vehicle when he's trying to take it through just a minor trail. I kind of, there was something I complained about in the video. I noticed it was kind of being planted in the ground. The vehicle was being driven into the ground instead of over. And that's just because with the low lip in the front, it couldn't clear the giant hump of dirt that he was trying to drive it over. So anyway, I don't know how this thing's going to do in a truly like hairy off-road situation on gravel, mud, snow realistic daily driving it's going to be perfectly adequate if you want something that's going to be a trail crawler go get a jeep wrangler go get something else that, that you know that you can do a lot more with if you want to now again do i regret buying this vehicle no absolutely not i love it it's got plenty of room for the family i can haul lots of stuff i've got lots of power it's quiet it's comfortable it's got all the features i want i thought about getting a ridge line but the problem i have with that is okay if i've got four family members in the car where do we put our stuff? Well, we got to put it in the back. Well, can we keep it dry? Can we keep it warm? Can we keep it cool? Not so much if it's just a tonneau cover with everything in the back of the, uh, the, the bed area. So that was the one thing that kind of pushed me away from getting a 2024 Ridgeline Trail Sport, which I thought about getting. So in the end, I'm very happy with the vehicle. I'm going to keep it as long as I possibly can. Um, you know, you got to also have to understand that resale on these apparently is not the best, but I plan on keeping it for as long as I possibly can. So I really don't care about resale. If anything, it might become a second vehicle if I buy something new down the road. So we'll see how it goes. Um, lifespan on these, you know, it depends on how well you take care of them, how well you maintain them. I'm fine with Honda quality. This is actually the fourth Honda that I've purchased, but I've owned a lot of cars and there's been cars I've only had for a couple of years and I've moved them out, moved into something else. So overall, I, I really do enjoy it. So I guess in summary, um, it's been a really good vehicle so far. It's only been a thousand miles in six weeks, but I've driven it a lot. Daily driver, taking some road trips with it, interstate highway, gravel roads, country roads. It's great. I think it's cool. Power lift gate in the back is great too. Um, it works really well and tons of space to haul stuff. 
Only upgrades I've added so far would be some WeatherTech floor mats, a little organizer for the center console, which I've got videos for all those, links for those in this video you can check out if you want to. And then also on Amazon, I went ahead and bought a center blind, the cargo cover in the rear. So again, now I know I'm covering a lot of information. I'm talking kind of quick, but there's so much I wanted to tell you about this vehicle, but do chime in down below and let me know if you guys have any questions about my ownership experience so far. What are my thoughts on it? And I realize that everything this has that you consider wrong with it, or that's kind of questionable in terms of quality. I mean, I, I, I probably should have had the dealer notice these things or get it fixed right away. The good thing is I can take it back at any time and get that stuff fixed and I will. But part of it was I'd already traded my vehicle off. I already got this and now I need this for now to get to work. And then if I hit some brakes or vacations, I can take it in and get the stuff addressed. So it's not a big deal. It's covered through 36,000 miles and then um, 560 on the powertrain. And I did buy an extended warranty for it. So that's basically it. What has your experience been like with your passport or your passport trail sport if you have one? I know there's a lot of people out there that have them. I seem to notice pilots and passports everywhere now that I have one. And uh, they're maybe not as rare as I thought they were before. So anyway, this is Travis. This is Coffee Computers and More. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And uh, I'll give you another update maybe if we hit 5,000 miles or we'll just take some time off. And once I get the skid plate on, that video will be on my other YouTube channel. You guys can check that out. And uh, that's it. So I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe, tread lightly, and as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.